Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Again, this is your host, Santos Capilion Jr. Guys, today what I'm going to do is to explain to you the final uh, final output of our uh, BACnet controllers uh, script programming tutorials. Okay? Now, I think this will be part, if I'm not mistaken, maybe part 15. Okay, anyway. Uh, uh, the scope of today is to just first simulate to you the operation of this simple uh, exhaust fan, uh, ventilation fan control, okay? So let me start with the completed graph. Uh, so guys, uh, before anything else, I would like to show you the... Uh, screen or our system okay this is my uh, ventilation or this is my twin exhaust fan ventilation okay so our script program will try to control these two small fans okay now this will be our uh, control panel or our motor control then this is our backnet controller so again i have here a b3 device the model of this is B3804, uh, okay? So this is my B3804 and this is my B3624. Actually, for these two simple uh, exhaust fan, two fans, I was able to use the uh, only this controller, okay? Now this controller, B3, uh, B304, <clears throat> B3804, there are eight uh, universal inputs. Then there are four digital outputs. So since this is only two fans, so I only use two digital output, one and two input output channel one and two. Then like uh, here in universal input, I almost use all the uh, eight, but I think I use seven. Okay, because for this exhaust fan, I have three control uh, three control monitoring points. Okay, uh, auto run and trip for one fan, then auto run and trip for the next fan. Okay, then one, uh, one point four fire alarm. This is my simulation of fire alarm. I have a toggle switch here. Okay, so when there is fire alarm, I'm simulating it by turning on this toggle switch. Okay, so this is the system that we have written the script program okay let me go back to my system to my server okay now this is my server okay so this is the completed uh, graphics okay so all the points are already binded when your mouse pointer turn to pointing finger okay so all these points are already binded okay meaning this graphics points are already binded to our backnet controller Okay, now let me explain to you. Now, uh, actually, to control the system, okay, now actually this is the representation of the uh, control panel that I have shown you a while ago, okay? So, uh, actually, to control the automatic operation, okay, now as a BMS engineer, your scope is to uh, Write the control logic program of the equipment when it is in automatic. As you can see now, our selector switch is in auto. Okay, so EF1 auto auto. Okay, then uh, here I have here EF health status. Now this one uh, it will tell the operator that the system is healthy. Okay, if there is no trip in any of the pans and there is no manual position for the selector switch of any of the fan, then I can say our system is healthy. Okay, this is just an alarm indication or uh, this is just to prompt the uh, operator, BMS operator, what is the status of this twin exhaust fan ventilation fan control. Okay, now uh, especially if you are using this exhaust fan let's say this exhaust fan is serving the battery charging room so you like 
uh, it is uh, most of the time or 24-7, there should be ventilation in that room. Especially, I remember in one of my projects, like in a warehouse, okay, we have their battery uh, charging room for four clips, okay, because the four clip we are using their uh, battery operated four clip, okay, so most of the time uh, the batteries are being ch charged, okay, if it is discharged, okay, so in that room there should be always one. Uh, exhaust fan working okay the, the 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 reason there is of course this battery can emit toxic fumes so we need to vent it out okay so there should be always one fan running so that is the purpose of EFRT status let's say one of the fans uh, was put in manual or put in off the selector switch in off position meaning uh, there should be there must be some problem in that particular exhaust fan so the Benyamin's operator should always notify or should coordinate with the maintenance people what is the problem, okay? Because if my duty fan fails, I don't have a standby fan, okay? So that is the reason why I put here EFLT status, okay? Now, time schedule. Time schedule, uh, of course, uh, to be able to implement green building, we should be able to, uh, let's say, we should be able to implement energy conservation, okay? Because the biggest uh, amount that an owner will incur is in the uh, energy consumption, okay? Now, time schedule, let's say, uh, during there will be time of the day let's say from midnight you are not expected that let's say we are not expecting that anyone let's say we are we are uh serving this exhaust fan are serving the battery charging room there is a time of the day wherein there will be no uh people will enter the room okay so let's say let's say from uh, 12 midnight to 5 in the morning. So if you will make a time schedule, so from 12 midnight to 5, this exhaust fan will rest or there will be no exhaust fan working in that area. Okay? So that is the purpose of time schedule. Then operator enable, operator enable, this is the, to give the operator uh, a chance to turn off the equipment if there is some problem. Maybe the, the maintenance people will call the BMS operator. Okay, can you turn off the exhaust fan for a while because we are going to check this. So he can disable here. As you can see, now it is disabled. That's why there is no fan running. Okay. Now, operator EF1 start. Now, this is operator, meaning the operator. If he is sitting in front of the BMS workstation, he can turn off this equipment. As you know, this equipment can be installed. Uh, maybe this equipment are installed on the roof of the warehouse. Then the control panel is also located near the equipment. So the operator can start it, okay, manually. Or we can say this just like starting the fan manually. Okay. Likewise, operator EF2 start, okay. Now, what we have here fire alarm. Now, if there is fire alarm, since this is ventilation, <clears throat> we want the this exhaust fan to be off. Okay? So, that is the purpose of fire alarm. <clears throat> now, these are the normal, uh, normal <clears throat> monitoring points. Auto, selector switch position, auto, then the start stop command of our control logic program. Now, if it is in automatic, this point is the control. Okay? Then run status. Okay? We are monitoring the run status. Then we are also monitoring the trip. Actually, what is missing here is the uh, airflow control. Okay? Now, for the airflow control, maybe that is the last part of this series of tutorial. I will try to prepare the script program for that one. Okay? Now, here, I have here the EF run hours. Now, this one is the accumulated 
EF plan hours. As you can see, this plan is well driven. Okay, so for maintenance purposes, we need to prompt the maintenance people. If this plan, I have here the runtime set point. If this plan uh, runs already 500 hours, then uh, this EF runtime alarm will be on. Again, this is to prompt the operator to inform the maintenance people that that is the time to do some maintenance or preventive maintenance with the equipment in the equipment itself. Okay. Now, this uh, set point will be given by the chief engineer. Okay. So they will be the one, or the mechanical engineer will be the one to tell you, the operator, okay, make this set point to 1,000 hours. Okay. So I make this. Uh, set point flexible. Okay, I think I make it 1000 hours. Now, I have also here EF sequence hours. Now, as I said, we want equal to provide equal wear and tear in this new equipment. So, if uh, our uh, let's say I will make this now, the default value here is one week. That is 168 hours. So we can change this to 168 hours. Okay. So for the time being, I will change it to 168 hours. Okay. It should change to 168. No, now it's 168. Now you we, you, we, you can. Uh, I have a decrease arrow here. You can decrease this set point. Okay. It should become 158. Okay, so now it's 158. Now you can click that one, then I will put it back to 45 because I'm going to do some simulation. I don't want you to wait. Okay, now I'm using the same set point for runtime and sequencing for both funds. Okay, now here, okay, as you can see, I, I've been testing the control logic program, so you can see uh, I already have here. Uh, run hours here but that is not one that is not exact that is not hours so i think this is in seconds okay so i try to change the uh, constant in my uh, script program so that i'm actually monitoring set okay sorry i was disconnected okay let me share again Okay, then wait a minute. Share, okay. Now, sorry, I was disconnected. Huh? So let me check if it is recording. Okay. So, I'm, now I'm recording. Let me continue. Okay, again, uh, for the sequencing, this is to provide equal wear in gear. Okay, so let's say uh, by default, you say 168 hours. So, every week, these two pans will change over. Okay, so I have here the run request, run request. Since I've been running this for uh, quite some time, so as you can see, there are already some values. Okay. Now, uh, I think I already explained this. Then we will try to simulate the operation. Okay, now let me simulate. Now the operator disabled the system, so I will put it online. Okay, as you can see, you can hear at the background the energizing of my contactor. So EF2, okay, so since uh, it was running a while ago, before I start this tutorial, now it's changed over. As you can see, EF2 change over is on. Now EF1 is running here. Then as you can see, my runtime accumulation is... Uh, accumulating then my sequencing is also accumulating when it reaches 45 then it will stop then this one will run so that is uh sequencing of these two points okay so i will just show you how it will stop when it reaches the set point this running fan should stop okay so you can see when it reaches 45 then it, the time the sequencing time will be reset to zero, okay? Then EF2 is running now, okay? So guys, uh, this will be the uh, automatic operation of the two parts. As you can see, it is already sequencing, okay? So let's wait till EF2. Anyway, it's just 
45 seconds. Okay. So I hope uh, I have shown you the completed VMS graphics for this twin exhaust ventilation fan control. Okay. Now uh, you can, as I said, we will put here the uh, DPS or differential pressure switch that is sensing the airflow. The purpose of that one, because maybe the motor is working, but the belt is broken. Of course, your fan will not rotate. Or the belt is cracked, then maybe the fan will not uh, rotate at 100% RPM. So it will not deliver or, or it will not suck the air from the area being served by this exhaust fan. So that is one of the purpose of uh, differential pressure switch. I will include it in the next tutorial. Okay. Now, I guess uh, this simulation and explanation of the BMS graphics is clear with you. So I will do the next part of this one. Okay, as you can see, now the two fans are uh, sequencing. Okay, maybe I will try to show you it. Uh, it will trip. Later, I will do the uh, simulation of the safeties okay so that will be the scope of part two once again if you are new to my channel please uh, if you have not yet subscribed please do so and if you really appreciate what i'm doing you can also watch the ads being played in my uh, video okay so once again before i will end the tutorial uh, god bless us all let's all be safe and bye